we have looked at various properties of bezier splines now let us see what happens if we move the control points of a bezier spline what kind of effect does it have on the shape of the curve this this also gives us uh, a handle over how we might edit the curve or how we might control the shape of the curve now every point on the bezier spline pt is equal to summation of bi j and i p right therefore every point on the curve is equal to product of the basis function times the control points summed over all the control points and all the basis functions we have seen for a bezier curve that the blending functions right that is the bernstein basis functions are all non zero in the interior of the curve only at the starting point and and at the ending point do they go to zero therefore if i move a single control point so look at the example here they have moved this control point to there so even if a single control point is moved then the entire curve so this was the original curve this has moved to that the entire curve moves because every point on the curve depends on all the control points and the reason for this dependence is that all the basis functions are non zero everywhere in the interior of the curve okay so they are affecting all points on the curve so this property is called the property of non local control this basically means that i cannot just move a control point and adjust a small part of the bezier curve if i move any control point i will end up moving the entire bezier curve that is not a very desirable situation to have for interactive shape editing so suppose you are creating a vase right so say this is a vase so this is a this is a a vase is supposed to be symmetrical so the right side has not turned out to be symmetrical to the left side so suppose you say that okay i designed this entire thing as a bezier curve but now i am not happy with the right side of the curve but i am happy with the left side of the curve let us say this is the these are the control points so you say that i am not happy with the right side of the curve so can i just pull this control point a little bit outside and modify the shape of the curve you know can i can i change the control polygon to this and only modify this part of the curve right and i don't want anything to happen to the rest of the curve well that is not possible because the moment you move a control point the entire curve is going to shift because of this property of non local control so because of this property bezier curves are a little difficult to work with okay however we will see a solution to this and the solution to this lies in this very beautiful algorithm for evaluating bezier curves and this algorithm is called de castellaus algorithm what is de castellaus algorithm so a bezier curve pt is equal to summation bi j n comma i t now suppose you want to evaluate this curve what do i mean by evaluate you are given some value for t so suppose you given t is equal to 0.4 you want to substitute t is equal to 0.4 and figure out the point on the curve for this parameter value that is the meaning of evaluating the curve at a particular parameter value one way of doing that is to substitute this point inside this equation and compute the bernstein basis multiply it with all the control points sum them up and get the value of pt another way of evaluating the curve is by using de castellaus algorithm 
let us see what is the Castellaus algorithm. Okay. And here instead of T, they have used uh, the variable U inside this example. So that is okay. You can also think of this as that T is equal to 0.4. Okay. It's the same thing. So here is an example where you have a Bezier curve that has 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is a degree 5 Bezier curve. Now I want to evaluate the point at t is equal to 0.4. So what does de Castellaus algorithm say? It says figure out the point at 0.4 on the first span. So if this is the first span of the curve, then if t is 0 here and t is 1 here, what is the point at t is equal to 0.4? So this is just a linear interpolation. Figure out this point. Figure out the point at t is equal to 0.4 on the second span. Again, take t is equal to 0 here, t is equal to 1 here. Figure out the point at t is equal to 0.4. Similarly, do this for all the spans. Okay. This gives you another control polygon which is this, you can say that this is the second level control polygon. Okay, repeat this process. Take the first span of the second level control polygon and figure out the point at t is equal to 0.4. Repeat this for all the spans. You get a third control polygon. Repeat this linear interpolation process you get a fourth level control polygon. And finally, repeat this one last time till you get a fifth level control polygon on which if you do an interpolation, you are left with a single point. Okay, so every time all you are doing is a linear interpolation. So de Castellaus algorithm is nothing but repeated linear interpolation. Okay, and by doing repeated linear interpolation, the claim is that this last point that you are left with is the point on the curve that you would have got had you substituted t is equal to 0.4 in this equation. So this is absolutely brilliant in my opinion. How do you prove that doing this repeated linear interpolation is the same as solving the equation that we have for PT. And I want you to think about this proof. If you can do this proof, the hint to this proof lies in this diagram. So uh, what you can what you can think is that the first level control points are here. Okay, these are the first level control points. And you are taking two of these and doing a linear interpolation, right? So how do you do this linear interpolation here? You multiply one span with t and you multiply the other span with 1 minus t, right? For whatever t value you are evaluating and you find the second level control point. You do this for all pairs and you find all the second level control points. Then you repeat your linear interpolation and you find your third level control points. And you do this till you reach a single point. Okay? So if you try to think of any path from here that takes you to this single point, how many steps will this path have? This path can at maximum have n steps. If you have n plus 1 control points. Out of these n steps, if i times you took the t step. So t step means, so for example, we had said t is the down arrow. So i times you took the down arrow.
then the remaining n minus i times you took the up arrow because that is how this path is formed right so one path is made up of i t steps and n minus i 1 minus t steps how many possible paths can you have depends upon the ways in which you can choose i out of n so the number of ways in which you can go from here to there will be n choose i t to the i 1 minus t to the n minus i so doing this linear interpolation therefore is the same as evaluating the bernstein basis so listen to my explanation again carefully and go and read the proof at this link it will also become clear to you when you think about the de castellaus algorithm that the value for a entry j of a column i so these are the columns and you can think about the entry j here for a column i is computed as bij equal to 1 minus u times bi minus 1 comma j plus u times bi minus 1 j plus 1 so it is 1 minus u times the jth element in the previous row and u times the j plus 1th element in the previous row which is what we did in our example of de castellaus algorithm here so you can see that de castellaus algorithm can be written in this recursive form if you implement it as a recursion then it is just a two line implementation however what i want you to think about is that is this a good way to implement this algorithm and i highly recommend that you read through these notes to get a much better understanding of de castellaus algorithm now we also established that bezier splines have this property of non local control and we therefore cannot locally edit the shape of a bezier spline and i gave you this example of wanting to change the shape of the right side of the vase the curve that represents this vase and being unable to do so but what if we are able to split the bezier curve so if i can split the bezier curve here into two curves left and right such that they are still joined at this point where i split them but now because they are they are two separate curves if i change the shape of the right curve then the shape of the left curve is not affected if i can figure out a splitting mechanism like this then the local control or local editing of the bezier curve becomes possible so i will just give you a hint about how such a split might be doable look at our example for de castellaus again see this control polygon 1 and 2 3 4 5 6 and again see 1 prime 2 prime 3 prime 4 prime 5 prime 6 prime so you can see that our original bezier curve of degree 5 has now been split into two bezier curves also of degree 5 the first one is represented by these control points 1 2 3 4 5 6 <laughs> and the split is at the point of evaluation and the second segment is 1 prime 2 prime 3 prime 4 prime 5 prime 6 prime and you can see that the points 5 6 1 prime and 2 prime are collinear so you have c1 continuity here at the point of joining already enforced for you okay 
So de Castillo is not only giving you a way to evaluate the curve at a point, it is also giving you a way to split the curve. Now if I change the position of say 3 prime, then only the shape of the right segment of the curve is going to change, the left segment of the curve will not change when it is expressed using these con newer control points of the split curves. Okay, so this gives you a way to do local editing on Bezier curves. So read about subdividing Bezier curves also at these links as a use of de Castellau's algorithm. With this, we finish our discussion on Bezier curves and our discussion on modeling with curves. Thank you.